uh, we're checking out in Sephora. That's me. And Dustin's right behind me. That's Dustin. That's Dustin being very patient with the purchase. <laughs> For the record, do you recall what's in your hand in the video as, we, as it's being played? I, which hand, I, in one hand I had the Neiman Marcus bag, in the other hand I was using a coupon from my phone. Yeah, the, the gate was pulled down. <coughs>
go through the previous few more. That's just for the clarification. 50? Yes, sir. Thank you. <coughs> Your Honor, for the record, S50 contains a DVD that its contents was transported or transferred onto the laptop for use in playing. Uh, do you recall what you did after you left the Sephora? We left them all. Uh, I'm going to show you what's been, what you've previously seen regarding surveillance and video within the mall. I'm just going to ask you uh, just to describe what you're seeing. Okay. Do you recognize this view? Yes. And what is it? Um, <coughs> it's looking into the mall. It's where we walked out of, where the camera's coming from, I think. That's the Ford directly in front, right? Yes. I'm kind of far away. Oh, yeah, I can see. Inside of the mall? Yes. Can you keep your voice up, Mr. Amarillo? Yes, sir. I draw your attention to the upper right. Okay. <coughs> oh, that's us walking. Say something, Miss Uh, no, not yet. That's us. <laughs> I thought I saw us, but I didn't yet. I'm going switch to clip. I'm switching to clip three of the DVD. That's us leaving the mall. show you what's been previously marked S1D as in David. Order. I'm going to show you what's been previously marked S1D. Okay. Do you recognize S1D? Yes, checking out in Sephora. And does that fairly fairly inaccurately depict your checkout experience or the view of you checking out yes. of Sephora? Your Honor, at this time I offer S1D into evidence. Any objection? None, Your Honor. S1D in evidence. I'm going to ask you to take a look at what's been previously marked. S1C is in Charlie. Do you recognize S1C? Yes. And what is S1C? Um, Dustin and I walking through the mall. Your Honor, at this time I offer S1C into evidence. Any objection? No, no. S1C in evidence. I'm also going to ask you to take a look at what's been marked S1B as in boy. Yeah. Do you recognize S1? Yes. B? And what does S1B depict? Um, us walking through the mall holding hands. Your Honor, at this time I offer S1B into evidence. 
Any objection? None, Your Honor. That's one being on it. Your Honor, I'm just going to display it to the jury. Very well. We left the mall, we walked out the mall doors, we walked across the little mall street into the parking structure, we walked up the internal parking structure steps, one flight of steps. Um, as we were walking there, I looked at Dustin and I said, what a great productive day we just had. We finally got to celebrate our anniversary and purchase of our new condo and <laughs> it actually was a good day until the end. Um, we, as we were walking, um, I noticed two women walking in front of me up the stairs. I remembered their boots for some reason as we were walking, and I um, recalled that they had some sort of a European accent as they were walking. Um, we walked up the stairs, the internal stairs to the parking deck, and as we exited the stairwell, um, our car was parked about 25, 30 feet in front of us on a uh, diagonal. We were looking right at it as we exited. Just stop me right there for a second. When you got to the second floor, which was marked three by the parking deck standards, yes. and you came out onto the parking deck from the stairwell, can you please just describe the crowdedness or lack thereof of the deck when you came outside? Uh, I mean, there was no comparison to when we came in and it was full. There was a handful of cars, I would say, as we left. Um, the exact number, I'm not sure. It's just a small handful. And when you got to the second floor of the deck, did you see any people on or around the deck? Um, aside from those two women that uh, were walking in front of us, I'm not too sure what floor they exited on. So aside from them, no. When you got to the second floor of the deck, when you came off the stairs, you stated you were able to see your car, is that correct? That's correct. And I'm going to show you what's been previously marked. S38 and S39. S38 and 39. I'm going to ask you to take a look first at S39. Uh -huh. Do you recognize S39? Yes. And what does S39 depict? Um, our car. I'm also asking you to take a look at S38. Do you recognize S38? I do, yes. And what does it depict? Um, our car. And how would you describe the condition of your vehicle in S38 and 39? Um, the window is broken from a murder. And in S39, how would you describe the condition of the car? Um, it looks scratched. Other than the scratched and the broken rear window, does that fairly inaccurately depict your vehicle from when you parked the vehicle? Yes. Your Honor, at this point in time, I offer S38 and 39 into evidence. Any objection? None, Your Honor. S38 in evidence, S39 in evidence. Your Honor, permission to publish the photos? You may. Thank you. You're on the second floor of the deck. You just come out of the stairwell. You see your car approximately 25 feet away. What did you do at that point in time with Dustin? 
We walked to the car. He um, opened the car door for me, as he always, always did. Um, I got in the car. I buckled my seatbelt. Because we were so close to that red piping, as I described earlier, he couldn't walk around to get to the driver's side from the front. So he t had to walk around the back of the car to get to the driver's side door. When you said he opened the door for you, uh, can you just, is the Range Rover a remote, or how does he unlock or open the door before he can physically open the car door? Um, yes, as long as you're within a certain amount of distance, you can just, uh, I think we could never quite figure it out, but yes, you, you should be able to just press the, the handle and it unlocks. And do you know if any, what if anything happens to the lights on the vehicle when the car unlocks? Uh, they light up. And after the vehicle uh, was opened by Dustin, you sat in the front passenger, correct? I buckled my seat and I sat there. Uh, and do you recall if your door, he closed your door? Yes. Uh, and then he proceeded towards the rear of the vehicle, is that correct? Yes. Uh, and can you please describe what happened as he proceeded towards the rear of the vehicle? So I was sitting in the car and um, I buckled my seatbelt and I was uh, waiting for him to get in the car and as I was waiting I heard muffled talking and I thought oh my god Dustin's making friends with someone I just want to go home what are you doing and so I turned around and I saw Dustin standing in the middle of um, a person, a man on each side of him. I saw um, the person that was in the passenger side uh, was clearly shorter, how they were hunched over Dustin. And I saw um, the person on the driver's side door was obviously tall, how he was hunched over. I saw, um, I saw a struggle. Um, this all happened within 10, 15 seconds. Um, I saw, I saw the struggle. I saw the taller man who was behind the driver's side door. I, I saw, um, I saw him put the gun to Dustin's head, and I heard bang, bang, and then the, and then the window shattered of the car, and then like in slow motion it played out. I saw the taller the taller guy, I saw him walk around, I saw him then I saw him out of the the rear window walking walking, then I saw him in the driver's side window. I couldn't he opened the car door and I couldn't see his head at first because he was taller. And in the meantime I I couldn't get my seatbelt undone. I didn't know am I supposed to hide between the dashboard and the seat. I you don't know what to do in these situations. I and it was so fast. And he opens the car door, he leans in, he points the gun at my head, and he said, get out of the fucking car, bitch. And I said, okay, okay, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. And I grabbed my purse, they got it at my cell phone, and I got out of the car. And I, I don't even know if I shut the door. So when you got out of the car, um, do you recall which way you went? I went um, straight uh, straight out. So I, I was standing like parallel with the tr door still. And were you able to make any observations of the individuals that were wrestling with Dustin? Yes. At the back of the car. What color were their skins? Do you recall? Um, they were black. And the could you estimate <coughs> age on your view? Could I ask me? I'm sorry? Can you ask me how old they were? Were they old or young? They were probably about my age. Uh oh, I'm 30. Sorry, for the record. <laughs> uh, and when you said that one was tall and one was short. Yes. Obviously those are terms of perspective. In what perspective are you making that reference of tall and short? Um, I, I could tell that the person that was um, on the passenger side was significantly shorter because just how the huddle, Dustin in the middle and he was the one that was first on top of Dustin 
and then the taller guy who was on the driver's side door behind um, was on top of the whole pile, kind of, and it was clear that he was taller. And not only that, but when the taller guy who to shot him, um, when he um, when he walked around to the car, um, I it, I understood his height because it was an SUV that we we owned, and I couldn't see his head until he leaned in. So when he initially opened the car door, I couldn't see his head because he was taller than the car. From the point the taller individual stuck the gun into your face and when you got out of the car, did you see the second individual, the shorter one as you described? I, after that you mean? Yes. No. I saw him get into the car. Uh, yes. So I saw him get into the car, but after that, after they, no, after they stuck the gun in my face, no, they were in the car. Okay, so at that point in time you were able to exit the vehicle? Yes. And those two individuals that were struggling with us and got into the car? They got into the car. The car, both car doors slammed. And what actually, what happened at that point? Well, the car doors slammed and they skidded out of there. Um, and I was even thinking like, oh my God, they're going to run him over because I'm standing here and he's right there. and. I just knew, I knew when I turned around, I knew what I was going to see. After the car was gone, what did you see? I turned around, and I, thank you, I turned around, and I saw Justin laying there in a pool of blood, and I ran over to him. And I, could, I couldn't get my phone to work because I just got it at the Apple Store. It was just right when the, the thumbprint came out and I couldn't, and we programmed it at dinner because I thought it was so cool and I couldn't figure out how to unlock my phone to call 911. And so I leaned down, I was on the floor covered in his blood and he was covered in his blood. And I held my hand to his head and I, I was screaming, I was screaming, stay with me, stay with me. I mean, you don't even you don't even know what to do in situations like that, and I, and I'm screaming, stay with me, stay with me, and I see his eyes and he's looking at me and he's gasping for breath, and I couldn't get my phone to work, and eventually, it felt like an eternity. Eventually, somebody ran over, um. I don't, with a walkie-talkie, and I heard him saying to the walkie-talkie, call 911. So I thought, okay, that's taken care of, and so I finally got my phone to work, and I called my mom up from Michigan, and I was by myself, and so I called my family, and take your time, and eventually, there's blood everywhere, more, um, or not more, some officers started arriving on the scene, and um, my phone was dying. They don't obviously give you a charged phone, and so they wanted to uh, start, I don't even know, they took me away from Dustin as soon as they finally, someone finally showed up, and um, I, my phone was dying, and I was on the phone with my mom, and I was all alone, and so I, um, they opened the back of the police car door for me and I plugged my phone in because I didn't want to hang up with my mom. <laughs> and um, I sat like half in, half out of the police car while, um, because they wouldn't let me buy him anymore while it was happening. Just slowing you down for a second, I know it's difficult, but I just needed to ask, when you were holding Dustin, were you able to communicate with Dustin? <laughs> I was screaming, stay with me, stay with me. His eyes were following me, they were focused on me, he was blinking, he was gasping for breath, but I know he heard me, I know he heard me, but otherwise he was he could he he could not talk, no. Uh, and you were he was breathing when he was in your arms, is that correct? Yes. And uh, Ultimately, law enforcement and medical personnel came on the scene, and that's when you were escorted from holding Dustin to the back of a police vehicle where you were sitting half in and half out, is that correct? Yeah, they wouldn't let me buy him anymore because uh, 
Well, I don't really know why, but yes, that is that is when, yes. Um, and while you were at the police vehicle, uh, people were rendering aid uh, to Dustin, is that correct? Um, uh, yes. And ultimately, Dustin was taken from the parking deck to a hospital, is that correct? Yeah. Uh, uh, a while later, yes, the 911 didn't come. I hung out with my mom so I can call 911 myself. And like a half an hour later, finally, um, an ambulance showed up, but not really because they couldn't get the ambulance into the parking deck. And he's literally bleeding out on the ground. And so they had to, they had to literally roll the stretcher up the incline of the parking deck to get to him. And they loaded him on the stretcher. And then, yes, they took him. After he was loaded on the stretcher and ultimately taken down the ramp and off, is that when you were then taken uh, in the police vehicle to uh, Millburn Police Department? Yes, the door, they shut the door to the police car. I didn't know where I was going. I assumed I was being taken to the hospital. My husband was dying. Um, they didn't take me to the hospital. They took me to the police station, yes. And then from the police station, you were taken to Marstown Memorial? I was, yes. And while you were at Morristown Memorial, uh, is that where Dustin ultimately died? Yes. The doctors then came up to me and told me that there was nothing else they could do. From, yes. I have no further questions. Well, Judge, we have no cross at this point. Ms. Quigley, you may step down. You know, just for housekeeping, I would have to move in the two discs, that being S50 and S51, which were already played. Any objection to S50 and S51? None, Your Honor. In evidence. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. My city attorney at the sidebar.